So if you watch any of my videos, I talk sometimes about staying away from gluten. Well, what the heck is gluten and why is that even important for a type 2 diabetic? So in this video, I am actually going to go, it's going to be kind of fun, but I am going to go kind of in the depths of what gluten is, why it's important. I'll share some stories and experiences that you will certainly appreciate. And you'll understand more about if gluten is the right thing. And if it isn't, well, why is it really bad and what ramifications and your health could it have? So hang tight. We have a lot to go over, but enjoy this video. This is definitely one of my favorite videos because you're going to get a lot out of it. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we look at is, well, what is gluten in the first place, right? I'm sure if you've gone to the store, you've probably seen something that says gluten free. And if you've been paying attention in the store, you know that uh, 20 years ago, you may have seen one item that says gluten free. And now it's like, it seems like it's everywhere. Even when you go to restaurants, uh, you know, there's something a gluten free menu sometimes. Or, you know, if you go to a restaurant, you'll see like a little GF uh, standing for gluten free right next to the actual food. But what actually is gluten and why is this a big deal? So let's actually talk about this. All right. So uh, when we look at a piece of wheat, all right, and, and I want to be a full disclosure, the wheat we are eating now is not the same wheat they talked about in the Bible many years ago. Right. Because they, they mentioned that this is a different type of wheat and this is a wheat that is what is called genetically modified so what does that mean that means that there are some scientists and, and people that work in the food uh, agricultural industry that have altered our wheat okay so the same wheat that they talk about in the bible is not the same wheat as a matter of fact if you go to other countries like in europe they actually process and their wheat is actually very different but anyway, let's talk about what this is, all right? So let me draw on the screen here, all right? And so you have a better understanding. Believe it or not, um, there are three different parts to actually a piece of wheat. You have the germ, which is this area right here, and that is basically the seed for another piece of wheat. So it's basically the germ is what actually makes more and more wheat grow. It's the seed of the wheat. The endosperm right here, that is actually the part that is the gluten. And as you can see, it takes a large part of actually this piece of wheat. And then the last thing is the bran, and the bran composes of certain vitamins within the wheat, as well as the carbohydrates. Okay, so what's the big deal? Well, over time, they have genetically modified this, essentially increasing this gluten part, this endosperm part. So play along, I'm gonna do a drawing here. So basically, right, if they made the germ smaller and they thinned out the bran, now they could have more gluten in the middle. So gluten could take a larger part of the picture here, okay? Now, why would you wanna do this? If you were manufacturing wheat, why would this be an important thing? Well, believe it or not, when they've done certain studies, they found out that when they started making the wheat have more gluten, uh, insects wouldn't eat it. Insects look at it like, what the heck is this? And, and the insects actually don't eat it at that point. Well, this is really good if you're a manufacturer uh, of, you know, agriculture where you're trying to produce a lot of wheat for a society, because now they don't need to put these big airplanes in the sky and use all the pesticides and, and so forth. And it costs them a lot less to actually produce the wheat. The other thing is by not needing this, they could still make your cookies, cakes, and donuts, and all those things really cheap. No one wants to go to the store and buy like an $86 donut, right? So, so they made this modification, okay, to the wheat in order for, uh, for a couple things. Mostly it's profit, right? But also um, it's because they can keep the, uh, the cost of the wheat down and, and down low. Now, uh, why is this an issue, right? So now we look at there is a problem with gluten. Okay, and I'm going to tell you a really quick story that you'll appreciate. So when I practiced in New Jersey, I don't know why this occurred, by the way, but this is pretty funny. So I had um, I had a, an attorney. Now, so I practiced in New Jersey, and you can imagine what new attorneys are like in New York City, right? They're pretty tough guys, and they're pretty uh, aggressive, right? So I did have a patient, type 2 diabetic. Uh, they were an attorney, and they came to see me. And they wanted me to help them so i went through this whole conversation with them about hey listen you should really stay away from gluten 
And, you know, they were pretty dead set on, hey, gluten is not an issue. There's no way everything is good. You know, I'm, I'm not sensitive to gluten. And I was like, you know, a lot of the world's population, because of this genetically modified uh, component, you know, they're, they're really sensitive to gluten. So I'm like, I would definitely stay away from it. But he's an attorney. <laughs> so he's arguing with me. Oh, I can't be allergic. There's no way. And I was like, you know, I was just in one of those moods. I was like, all right, listen, why don't we send you out for labs? And there are certain labs in the country that run really good testing on this. And I said, let's just look and see. And maybe you are right. Maybe you're that first person, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, this lab that I sent this this uh, uh, this attorney out to, it was a couple hundred bucks, maybe three, four hundred dollars for doing the testing. Um, and I got the results back in about two weeks. And what it does is, is that actually an antibody test, really, really good test. And it looks at 17 different components of wheat and, and gluten and other things like that. Like if you have the gene for celiac and other things, right? So anyway, uh, the, the, he comes back in and I'm about to go over the lab results. Well, out of the 17 tests, literally 14 of them showed that he was positive. And <laughs> I was like, why don't you just let me do my job? I've done this only a couple thousand times. Like, trust me, just stay away from wheat. So anyway, he left my office, tail between his legs. And I was like, you know, you, you want evidence and I provided evidence. So he, he learned his lesson. And no sooner than that, than literally like six months later, another attorney who is a patient comes into my office and, and we had the same discussion. Now, I wanted to be nice and I was like, listen, let me just save you the $300. We shouldn't go and get wheat tested. I think, you know, it makes sense to just not get it tested. Just take my word for it. I may just know something about it but he's an attorney. So he's like, nope, there's no way. And, you know, he's going through this whole uh, speech about, you know, it was in the Bible. And I, you know, I, I kind of explained this, not on a slide, but anyway, long story short. So I just didn't feel like arguing. I was like, all right, let, you know, let's send you out for the labs. Let's see what's going on. So same scenario. And I'm just like, why don't they listen? Like, I don't know. So anyway, they wind up going, he, he wound up getting the lab done. And exactly like I mentioned earlier, kind of like a literally a repeat, like it's Groundhog's Day, like I've been in this day before. Uh, he comes back in, I go over to the labs, out of the 17 tests, he is positive for 11 of the 17. So what is my point to this? Um, you're likely allergic and or sensitive to gluten. And I will explain why in the next slide. But my point is, don't be an attorney. Just trust me, stay away from gluten, all right? So let's go to the next slide. All right, here we go. So um, so this is what happens, right? So uh, this is a person and they're about to eat gluten, right? So how many times have you seen that where you go to a family member's house or a relative's house and you see all this food that looks so good, right? Cookies and cakes and your favorite dessert and all of this gluten sitting there and boy, does it taste good. So you wind up consuming it, right? And you eat the birthday cake, you wind up eating the cupcakes, uh, chocolate, vanilla, whatever, and it goes in your mouth. And in the tip of your nose to the back of your mouth, it is heavenly. Oh my God, it tastes so good. So what's the problem, right? It's who cares? The problem is this. It has to go from your mouth through your body, through all of this tubing, out the other end, okay? So I'm not going to draw a picture of the other end. You know what the other end looks like, right? So it has to go through all of this tubing. So correct, she is really happy that she's eating these cookies and cakes and donuts and all of this. But once it gets past the back of your throat, it starts kicking your butt, right? And that is one of the issues. And let me explain. And that's what happens. She starts crying, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> so, so you don't want to go from this to this. That is not the goal, right? You do not want to do it. I remember many times, um, you know, when I was in practice in New Jersey and I was there for about 20 years, we had actually stairs um, from, like, the reception area up to the treatment area, like four stairs. And it's been common to see, and throughout you know the years of practicing there, once in a while I have a patient literally crawling up the stairs, and and I'm looking at them like, what is going on here? And they're like, well, I had a wedding this weekend, and I'm like, did you learn your lesson, right? Because they wound up going to this wedding, eating all these bad foods or whatever, and and inflaming the heck out of them. All right, so I want to talk about why that happens, just so you are aware of it. This way, um, you understand what the big deal is. 
All right, so here we go. So I am going to erase this. All right, so remember I was telling you about that tube. All right, so I'm going to redraw this tube. So the tube goes from the mouth. All right, I'm just going to draw it out here just so you know. And then it goes out the other end, and we'll make this a tube. All right, so now you eat that glue in. All right, what color should we make glue in? We'll make glue in purple. All right, so you eat this cake, right? We'll say this cake is purple. And this cake starts traveling down this tube, okay? Now, the problem with it, remember I told you about how the wheat is now modified? It looks different. Well, the body doesn't really understand what the heck it is. It doesn't really even know if it's a food or not. Oops, sorry. Let me erase that. So it doesn't even know if it's a food or not. So what occurs is that it thinks it's like a pen cap, like as if you ate a pen cap. And when it does that, what happens is it will look at this piece of food and literally start going in here and destroying it. And when that happens, it actually creates a ton of inflammation. What does this inflammation do? It does a lot of things. It can make you feel bad. It can make your joints feel bad. It can make your blood sugar go up. It can cause issues with your digestive system, right? And that's where you become like this person and you're crying, right? You're like, oh, my, hurt. my feet hurt, my hands hurt. So what happens now is that this, this piece of uh, whatever you ate that tasted good a couple hours ago, it keeps going through the body. And as it keeps going through the body, it keeps getting attacked. It gets attacked over here. It gets attacked in other places. It gets attacked over here. So all of these attacks wind up causing inflammation. And by the time it gets out of your body, okay, because it'll take, you know, whatever, some time to get out of your body. You may even have some diarrhea or whatever in the process you've wind up creating all of this destruction along the way right something that people experience is the tubing right your 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 intestinal lining tubing winds up getting destroyed so this little uh, area here winds up getting actually erased right i don't know if you could see this but you wind up getting something called leaky gut there's a really good product uh, you can probably find it on my website it's called uh the leaky gut powder it's really really good it has a really good protein in it but you want to get something called leaky gut and then what happens from this point is really important because now every time you may eat something instead of it going i'm gonna use green now instead of it going down your body out this tube it actually leaks into your body and your bloodstream right and if it continues to do that that creates more inflammation so oh my god why is this a big deal well it's a big deal because this whole process here could actually last up to six to eight weeks so talk about shooting yourself in the foot right like if you ate a piece of wheat or gluten or something like that um there is a big factor related to it because you have six to eight weeks that you may be inflamed right so even though yeah you ate it and everything is you know maybe you're feeling a little bit better that inflammation which affects your blood sugar it affects your weight and so forth sets you back six to eight weeks in some cases now i know you're thinking oh it's no big deal it's just a little piece of wheat right and gluten well believe it or not studies suggest and as a matter of fact a good friend of mine wrote a book on this i did the um the introduction to the book but this, like even a crouton, even a crumb of a crouton could actually do this. Like, let's say you went to a, uh, a restaurant and you, you know, you're there and you have croutons and what have you, and you're eating these croutons. And, and as you can see, just before you put it in your mouth, you're like, oh my God, there's croutons. I'm not going to eat it. And you tell the waiter or waitress to bring it back, get rid of the croutons. And they take your salad and they bring it to the back. They get rid of the croutons, but they leave the crumbs of the croutons in your salad. Well, believe it or not, that could be enough to set you off for six to eight weeks. And what, what the studies suggest, and there's a lot of studies on this, is that the more exposure you get to it, the more vulnerable you become, right? So that means that the more you're, you're, you're having uh, uh, exposure to gluten and things of that nature, the bigger, the bigger the issues. Um, and I'm not going to get into on this video, but there's a lot of studies showing like how brain activity works after eating gluten and other factors. So it is very easy nowadays to be gluten free. There are so many options, not like 20 years ago or so when it started becoming a thing, but there are so many options available. My kids are, are, are all gluten free and they've been gluten free and they don't suffer. They still eat things that, you know, you would consider maybe unhealthy, but they have gluten free cupcakes at birthday parties, things of that nature. 
um, and so forth. So there are a lot of options there. Now, I'm not giving you specific instructions, but there are some patients that should not even have gluten-free products, and I'm not going to get into that in this video. I'll do that in a different video. But anyway, this is why it is really, really important to stay away from gluten, because you have six to eight weeks of potential inflammation that could be robbing you from better health, okay? So anyway, Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you would like more information, uh, you could definitely visit my website at www.drjspages.com. There's a lot of content in there. There's a lot of good information in there, but, uh, but really make sure you're following a really good diet and make sure you're staying away from gluten. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you for watching and take care. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you like the content, please like, share it to your friends and family members, and also subscribe to my channel so you get more content just like this. I'm also giving you a free ebook. All you have to do is just click the link below to get instant access to that. Remember, be well, stay well, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.